G'day guys, how are we? Welcome to the weekly roundup. And uh, as always, plenty going on in the world of boxing, both here in Australia and overseas. And of course, we're just coming off the back of the Tim Zhu Brian Mendoza fight on the Gold Coast. And just when you thought we might be just sort of tailing off into the uh, the, the rest of the year, uh, this mid October, of course, uh, still a multitude of Aussie boxers uh, still to fight this year. So it's a great. Great time of year for uh, the Aussie boxing scene and, of course, the world scene. Just uh, touching on the Tim Zhu, Brian Mendoza fight. Of course, we're almost a week past the fight, but just a quick overview of that card. So, of course, Tim Zhu moved to 24-0 and with a 12-round decision over Brian Mendoza, who drops to 22-3. and The final score was 116-112, 116-111, and 117-111. The main fight on the undercard, Sam Goodman, Moved to 16-0 and with a 12-round decision over uh, Miguel Flores. He dropped 25-5-1. and The scores 120-105 times 2, 118-107. So a great performance from Sam Goodman. Now, he's going to actually be back in action in early December. I'm pretty sure it might be December 2nd at this stage in Wollongong. Now, he's going to be supported on that card by Jackson John England, who's, who was on the undercard of the Zoo Mendoza fight as well. He's going to fight Liam Wilson in what should be a massive fight up there in uh, in Wollongong. So Jackson John England got the 10-round decision over Nathaniel May, 96-94 times 2, and 96-94 uh, uh, in the way of Nathaniel May. So a really, really good um, fight for uh, that one. Uh, could have gone either way. The rest of the card, Chanel Dargan with an 8-round decision over Amber Amelia, Hass Hamden with an 8-round decision over Danvers Kushieri. And uh, Wade Ryan with a 10-round decision over Sergei Vorobev. And the other fight, to, uh, Toisi Vosuatu with a fourth-round stoppage of Julius Long. Uh, earlier this week, Matteo uh, Matteo Tapia moved to 16-0 with a fifth-round stoppage of Eric Robles in Plant City, Florida. Robles dropped to 9-3. and three. So big things planned for Matteo Tapia. Managed, of course, by our good friend, uh, Mike Altamura. So uh, we'll see what happens with him early in the new year. Uh, now, a fight that that's, uh, might be coming up at the end of the year involves Michael Zarafa. Now, if, if you know what's going on with this or don't know, whatever way it might be, who knows what's going on these days when it comes to Michael Zarafa. So earlier in the year, uh, Arislandi Lara was scheduled to fight Danny Garcia for the interim WBA middleweight title. Oh, sorry, no, it was the full WBA title, but it was the vacant title. It was moved, uh, scheduled in for August the 5th, I think, from memory. Uh, Michael Zarafa was supposed to fight on the undercard. The fight didn't happen for whatever reason. There was no notice given to anyone about why it had been scrapped and when it was going to be rescheduled. Now, there is talk that this card might be rescheduled for December 9 in Las Vegas. So on the, that card as well, apart from Lara and Danny Garcia and hopefully Michael Zarafa, Keith Thurman is being rumoured to fight uh, Emantos Staniosis for the WBA regular World Awake title. Don't I'm not going to explain how that works with uh, Terence Crawford being the full champion and then who's the interim champion. We won't get into that. But either way, it'll be for a version of the WBA World Away title. Thurman Staniosis, Lara Garcia. Now, I haven't seen anything yet official from Michael Zarafa or the organisers of the card, but uh, there is word that he will be on that card December 9 in Las Vegas, maybe at the MGM Grand. So I'll keep an eye out for that. Uh, more Aussies in action on that same date, December 9, but this time it's in San Francisco at the Chase Center. This is on the undercard of Devin Haney, Regis Progress for the WBC Super Lightweight title. Liam Paro, he's been out for nearly a year. He will take on uh, former Stevie Spark opponent, Montana Love. So Liam Paro, 23-0, and 0, Montana Love, 18-1-1. One and one. Now, this means a lot, especially to Paro. He was ranked number one with the WBO there for quite some time. Now he's not ranked by any of the sanctioning bodies. Montana Love hasn't fought since uh, the disqualification loss to Stevie Spark. So a lot at stake for both of those fighters there, Liam Paro, Montana Love. Now also on that card, Australia's Ebony Bridges. Well, I think she's still Australian. She's based in England now and pretty much associates more with England than Australia, but that's a different story. Uh, she's 9-1. and one. She'll defend her IBF bantamweight title against uh, fellow Aussie. Avril Mathy, who's 8-1-1. One, and one. Now, you might not be familiar with Avril Mathy because she's not technically, well, she's not based in Australia, but she is Australian-born. She just bases her career overseas. So if you're not aware of her, she is 
and Aussie. So Bridges versus Matthew for the IBF band and weight title. Paro versus Montana Love in the main support to Haney Pro Grays, uh, San Francisco on December 9. So a big time of year for Aussies there. More Aussies in action. This time it'll be actually in January though. Rowan Murdoch, 27-2, and two, will fight Christian Mabili, the Frenchman. Uh, he's 25 and 0. That fight will take place on uh, January 13 in Quebec, Canada. It's on the undercard of uh, Arda Beev, Better Beev, I should say, and Callum Smith. So a massive opportunity for Rowan Murdoch there. Has been inactive for a long time. Now starting to get his career on track. So this fight with Mabili, undefeated, of course, uh, could open a lot of doors for Rowan Murdoch. So we'll keep an eye on that one. Alex Winwood will fight uh, Chris Ganoza from the Philippines on December 1 in Perth. It's at the Metro City Nightclub. It's uh, promoted by Dragonfire Promotions. It'll be a great card. They always put on really good events over there. Uh, Ganoza is 20-5. and five. Winwood is 3-0. and oh. Winwood, uh, even though he's only had the three fights, is ranked uh, number two by the WBC, number five by the IBF, number eight by the WBO, and number 13 by the WBA. So with this win here, Ganoza is also world-ranked. We could see Alex Winwood. Who would have thought it? Have a world title fight inside five or six fights as he attempts to break the record by Jeff Fenix. So uh, he's a great young guy, and let's hope he gets the opportunity. Uh, Sky Nicholson, she'll fight Lucy Wildheart on November 25 in Ireland. Uh, Sky is 8 and 0. Wildheart is 10 and 2 for the WBC interim featherweight title. It's on the undercard of uh, the Chantel Cameron, Katie Taylor. Uh, rematch. So a big stage for Sky Nicholson there. She's coming off a 10-round decision win over Sabrina Perez back in September. Uh, Wildheart lost her last fight to Michaela Mayer in April of this year. So uh, she'll be a really good, another good opportunity for Sky Nicholson, who's fought. This will be her sixth fight in a different country in nine fights. So she likes to uh, get around the globe. Uh, Justice Honey, uh, we're only a week out from his fight with Anthony Tabiti. That's uh, October 28th. Cancun, Mexico. That fight will be shown on the zone. Honey uh, coming off uh, a couple of 10-round uh, decisions over Kiki Latelli in November last year. And before that was Joseph Goodall in June last year, 10-round decision. So he was very, very active, I will say, early in his career, but only the, the two fights in the last couple of years. So... Um, Let's hope he can get his, his career back on track after a layoff with injuries and illness and everything else. Tabiti, he's coming off a fifth-round stoppage of James Wilson in August 2022. So he's been out of the ring quite some time as well, well over a year. And uh, he actually challenged for the IBF Cruiserweight title back in 2019, where he was stopped in 10 rounds by Uniel Dor Ticos. So uh, big stakes there for Justice Huni and Anthony uh, Tabiti. Uh, another uh, bit of news that's come to hand just in the last couple of days that relates to our, uh, sorry, our WBO bantamweight champion, Jason Maloney. One of the fighters to beat him early in his career, Manuel Rodriguez. You'll remember he beat uh, Jason for the IBF belt back in 2018, he's actually announced his retirement, which is really strange because there was talk that, uh, and a little bit of go, go back and forth between the two, um, now that fight might be run back for a unification fight, uh, and obviously doesn't look like it's going to happen. Now, Rodriguez is only 31 years of age, so a really strange decision there by Emmanuel Rodriguez, so we'll see what happens. Um, with that vacant belt, Reymar Gabello. Uh, and Ryosuke Nishida are the IBF 1 and 2 contenders. So they will contest for that belt if, it, in fact, uh, Manuel Rodriguez calls it a day. Let's go on to the world scene. Uh, the Kazakhstan Yanabak Alam Kanuli, I think I pronounced that right. I never get it right. Moved to 15-0, 10 KOs with a six-round stoppage over Vincenzo Gutierrez, who dropped to 21-1-1. One, and one. Now, that was for the unified WBO and IBF middleweight belts. That was in Rosenberg, uh, Texas. Now, uh, Gutierrez stepped in uh, to fight for KO, the Brazilian, who Michael Zarafa was supposed to fight for, for the vacant IBF belt. And uh, now, Janabek has claimed both of those belts. Will Michael Zarafa, maybe if the WBA belt doesn't come off, who knows, maybe he could get a shot at Janabek's WBO and IBF belt at some stage, but we'll see with that one. Um, word is Canelo Alvarez will fight the winner of David Benavides and uh, Demetrius and uh, Dreyder. So we'll see if that comes about. Of course, we're all looking for 
Um, the, uh, Benavides, obviously, to fight Alvarez at some stage. Ald Adrade, um, Andrade, sorry, won't be a pushover. It's 32 and 0, former two time world champion. Um, they will fight November 25th in Las Vegas. This is Andrade and Benavides I'm talking about. But uh, Eddie Hearn wants to stage the Alvarez versus the winner of this fight in May 2024. So Benavides, 27 and 0. Um, he's also expressed uh, a desire maybe to fight Dimitri Bivol at 175 if he can't get the Canelo fight at 168. Bivol, 21 and 0. What a fight that would be, Benavides and Bivol if we can't get Benavides and Alvarez. Uh, speaking of Eddie Hearn, he says the winner of the Devin Haney Regis Progress fight to take place in San Francisco, as I said before, will fight Ryan Garcia uh, next year. Garcia, 23 and 1. He's also got his own fight coming up uh, against Oscar Duarte on December 2. Um, so, um, yeah, so plenty of things happening in that division. Haney has also that said that after the uh, Progress fight that he wouldn't mind the fight with Shakur Stevenson. He has offered him a 75-25 split. So Stevenson has uh, deno uh, declined that offer. And uh, I think it's actually a really good offer, if you ask me. I think he needs to do what Devin Haney himself did against George Cambosis and just take the, uh, the B-side offer for this. Uh, if he's good enough to win the belt, then all the um, the money will come after that. But uh, you would think that Stevenson's got probably too much of an ego to do that. But hopefully it happens. But if it doesn't, plenty of good fights to happen at either 135 or 140 involving Haney, Garcia, Progres, Tiafimo, Lopez, you name it. They're all there. Uh, Davis, uh, Javante Davis, of course. So still plenty happening there. Speaking of uh, Shakur Stevenson, of course, he will fight Edwin De Los Santos on November 16 at the T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas. Uh, speaking of T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas, of course, was the site for Terence Crawford's win over Errol Spence uh, in July. Uh, that fight is looking, or the rematch is looking to be early February at this stage. Uh, but there is a little bit of a spanner in the works because the Showtime contract, uh, if you don't know, has been cancelled. I'll touch on that in just a second. Uh, but I'm not sure whether it ties into the rematch clauses, the whole Showtime thing, because, of course, they promoted the first fight uh, or uh, broadcast the first fight. So I'm not sure how that works, but there is word that maybe it could be a glitch in the Crawford-Spence rematch if it does happen, because it could be tied to the Showtime contract. I'm sure they'll work a way around it, but who knows, it could be another excuse for that fight not to happen. Hopefully it's not the case. Another fight that's sort of been planned to happen, but it hasn't yet. Looks like it's going to happen on December 23 in Saudi Arabia is Chris Eubank Jr. and Connor Ben. So I know Eddie Hearn was looking to maybe get it in England. I would love to see it in England. I understand all the fight, uh, all the money for these fights are in Saudi Arabia at the moment. But let's hope it maybe ends up in uh, England. But if not, Saudi Arabia, December 23rd, in which would be a massive all-England showdown. Uh, another fight that's been talked about that happened in Saudi Arabia is the Deontay Wilder and Andy Ruiz fight. Now, that fight's looking more like January now. Now, Ruiz has only fought twice in four years and Wilder three times in four years. So these guys have got to get a bit of a, a move on with, the careers, with their careers. Deontay Wilder is 43-2-1. Ruiz is 35-2. and two. As usual with all these big fights, lots of run around, lots of posturing. Uh, lots of everything except actually getting in the ring and fighting. So let's hope that Wilder and Ruiz get it on in January. And if it's not these two, well, maybe it's Anthony Joshua in there. But let's get some of these big fights happening. Uh, this weekend, Jack Cattrall in England will fight Jorge Linares. Cattrall 27-1, Linares 47-8. It will be for the WBA Intercontinental Super Lightweight Belt. Really, really good fight. I think this one, it's in Liverpool, will be shown on the zone. So if you've got that app, check it out. Um, pretty hard to pick a winner. I would probably go with Linares usually, but Catrell in his hometown, maybe a little bit younger, you might think might be just a little bit too uh, young and um, eager uh, over Linares, who seems to be getting towards the end of the uh, of his career. Now, on to the Showtime thing again. Uh, if you don't know, Showtime Boxing it will be no longer at the end of the year. Now, this is on the back of HBO shutting down the boxing program a couple of years ago. Unfortunately, Showtime have been around nearly 40 years and uh, will be no longer. And for someone of my uh, vintage, uh, it's a real shame. And uh, as I said, on top of the HBO thing, it's really hard to swallow that these two staples of boxing that I've known my whole life will be no longer. So ESPN, DAZN, possibly Amazon Prime 
will probably step in and take up the slack here in Australia. It'll be obviously main event to zone and, and stand sports. But it really is a shame. One of the last fights um, happened last week, which was Tim Zhu and Brian Mendoza. Uh, David Benavides and Demetrius Andre, the November 25 fight, will possibly be the last show on Showtime. Um, so, And again, I don't know how that works in with the Crawford and Spence rematch. Let's hope it's not a spanner in the works there. And just one last thing to end uh, this week's episode, a little bit of the joke of the day. Jake Paul says he's returning on December 15. On uh, in what he says will be on his way to become a world champion. So I thought I'd just end the day on a lighter note. I hope that gives you a bit of a laugh heading into the weekend. And uh, we'll see you next week on the Boxing Roundup. See you then.